good little narrative here. Good morning, Bart. Good morning. So this everybody. is the old pump. So when you get to, when you get ready to put your own well in your own little property up in the mountains away from nowhere, uh -huh. um, uh, some things that I have learned about doing wells. Um, so there's a, they kind of divide into a shallow well pump or a deep well pump. And it turns out, as I educated myself on wonderful YouTube, right? That's where all the information is. That and Google, they're the resources. Uh, a shallow pump well, uh, a shallow well is, it breaks off at about 25 feet. And it turns out that our water level is right at about 25 feet from the ground. So I got a shallow well pump Figuring we'd probably be able to pull it. But by the time we add in the height to get out of the ground into the pump and everything else, we fired up the shallow well pump and we were getting water into the pump and it was kind of spritzing and foaming and spitting and it really wasn't pumping, but the water was about there. So obviously we were at the limit for a shallow well pump. And the reason for that is water weighs about eight and a half pounds a gallon, whatever. Uh, you, you figure out... Uh, 25 feet of that in a one inch tube. I don't know how much you got there, but you have, you reach what's called an atmospheric limit. This is all stuff I've learned in the last week. This is amazing. Thank you atmospheric for learning all limit, this. <laughs> which means that it'll only pull to a certain point and then it can't suck anymore. Right. So I pulled out the old tube. It's laying over there. It's about 27 feet long and uh, it's full of water or was full of water. So the pump was pulling it essentially up to where the pump was, but not enough to get any flow out of it. So anyway, yeah. since we were at the limit of the 25 feet and the limit of the shallow well pump, I went in and ordered a deep well pump. So deep well pumps, depending on the pump, can go hundreds of feet deep in the ground and pump water out. This one here is rated for 150 feet. That looks much more robust. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is a submersible pump. It's all stainless steel. All the um, Impellers and everything are encased down in the pump. So we lower it down into where it's actually down in the water. So it doesn't have to suck any water into the pump. It just has to push it out. Okay. So with the shallow well, we had a priming mm -hmm. pump, which means we had to have piping and whatnot around the top to where we could put water into it and fill up the tube so that the pump could have something to pull. Um, with, the sh with the deep well pump here, since the pump's in the water, it doesn't have to worry about pulling anything. It's already in the water. All it has to do is push it out. And again, this one's rated to about 150 feet. So by the time we get the water out of the well, into the distribution pipe up here, go up the hill just a little bit, into the tank, we'll still be well within the 150 foot uh, limit. We're going to be, frankly, at about 50 feet. So we should be able to get plenty of volume coming out of this, fill the tank, and then we'll distribute it from there. Okay, so, this is exciting. Anyway. It's exciting. Thanks for now, doing all that research. You're amazing. You have to what? learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. You, do, right you do. And sometimes it, it feels so. painful, but if you do it, then you get the result. Now, um, so, you know, if, if we're kind of doing this for the purpose of not only uh, walking down the avenue of building this, but maybe offering some instruction as well, the shallow or the deep well pumps, most of them have a built in, what they call a uh, uh, back low or a, uh, a one way valve, okay, a stop valve so that water can flow one direction but not the other. However, reading up, they strongly recommended that we put a, 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 a valve above the pump. And if this was deeper, every 200 feet, you gotta have one of these valves in. So what happens is you're pumping water up, and when you turn the pump off, the water, of course, because of gravity, wants to go back down. Mm -hmm. If you have the stop valve in here, whatever water is pumped up into the tube mm -hmm. uh, stays there because the valve won't let it go back mm -hmm. down. So we've got that in here. We're well within you know, 200 feet. So we'll just put the one valve in here and then that should take care of everything. So what I've done here to get us set up, we have a, a rope here which is going to stay with the pump should in the future there ever be an issue with the pump, um, we can pull it back out. <laughs> okay. So this will go down in. It also allows us to lower the pump, lower things in because we've got to assemble the pipe as it goes down. We're going down. I've got 30 feet of pipe here. I lowered this down till it hit the bottom of the well. The well's about 36 feet deep all the way down. Okay. Uh, we're about 25 to where the water level is. There's a term they call drawdown. So if you put a pump in, know about drawdown. So imagine that your water, this is the top of your ground. This line down here is where the water level is of the uh, well. In this case, we got a little spring down there. Yeah. So let's say this is where the water level is inside the ground and your well comes down here to that water level, when you start pumping water out of it, because 
remember we're not pulling water out of a big tank, we're pulling water out of water level in the ground. It has to filter through the ground to get to where we're pulling it out. So as we start pulling water, water out of it, uh, the, the water level drops down. And depending on the soil and everything else, it, it, that can vary widely. But what we've done now, I've gone five feet below the water level to give us five feet of drawdown, which it'll probably never pull from what I've read anyway, yeah. <laughs> in this soil. Yeah. Um, so, so it should allow us five feet between the water level and where the pump is for that term they call drawdown. Okay. So it'll continue to pump water. Okay, that's so great. anyway, that's what we're doing. And because we've got a roof on this thing, I can't take full 10, 10 foot lengths of pipes and stack them on here and push them down. So I cut everything in half and put couplers on it. So the approach to doing this is going to be to lower it down, glue a new section of pipe on, lower it down a little bit further and continue that process till we get wow, to the bottom of it and then we'll go out through the wall. That's so, actually okay. that's actually amazing Well, yeah, we that you're taking on the steps to do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's... Uh, Thanks for figuring it out. This. Oh, we got, we're, we're learning as we go. By the time I die, I'm going to be a smart man. <laughs> like they say, by the time you figure it all out, it's too late. Well, by the time I'm... By the time I die, I'll be pretty smart because people like Rebecca keep coming up with new projects for me. To and do. and you keep agreeing and, to it. And, and, <laughs> and like learn me. about it in the process. Okay, so if you've done anything with PVC pipe before, you know how the system works. You put purple primer on all of your contacting surfaces. I had done this a little while ago, but I don't want everything to be totally dry. Uh, I want to make sure that we don't have any risks of adhesion not happening properly, so we're just re recoat these with primer as we go and then you fill the uh, fill the female end of whatever it is you're connecting with the PVC adhesive and then get your next piece ready we start the lowering process take this down to about where we want it to be where we can work with it and then we're going to put the next section of pipe in. You push these and give them a little twist and they'll bottom out when they don't move anymore. That's where you've kind of reached your, uh, as far as the pipe's going to go, because the glue will set pretty darn quick if you know much about the PVC adhesive. And then uh, we just move on down to the next one. And uh, maybe we come back after I've got it put together. Huh? Would you hand me that? One piece at a time, making sure our adhesives are all good and properly primed. Don't want any risk of anything not bonding properly, because once this is in the pipe, it, or in the, in the well, it's in the well. Bringing it back out, not much fun. Bringing it back out will require <laughs> disassembly of each of those pieces. Correct, yep. So if it has to come back out, you're going to pull it up to a certain point, and you're going to have to cut off the cut off each uh, each section oh. of pipe right yeah. got a little tube here i stuck through to see where jimmy how do the next one discharge is going to be in just a moment <clears throat> okay all righty thank you thanks for figuring this out oh yeah it's a it's an understatement when I say thanks for figuring this out, that's this no small task. And I'm continually, continually uh, amazed by your ability to figure <laughs> these things out. Well, thank you. There's a certain amount of basic rope knowledge that you develop over time, but you know, just the way things work as you play around with stuff. But when you have a new project you've never done before, knowledge is available. You just have to go out and get it. Again, what a wonderful world yeah. we live in to have this kind of information available to us at a fingertip as long as you have a you know, device that you can connect to the internet with. Yeah, and thanks okay. for contributing to it, Bert. Not implying that everything's out there, but you know, you can mm -hmm. figure things out. Yeah, people have been really generous in sharing their expertise and knowledge, and you are as well. Well, maybe this will, since we're learning, we'll help. We'll help someone. Value to somebody else down mm -hmm. the road, right? 
because I know everybody wants to run out and put their own well in. Hey, I know I'm. I know I'm not the only woman out there that. Um, has dreamt of having traditional Mongolian housing and an off-the-grid <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, and you know, it's kind of funny because there seems to be, from what I can tell, a, uh, no, what, what are they calling it? It's not a, uh, uh, it is an off-the-grid lifestyle. A lot of people are looking at that. Yeah. Um, what's the word? Uh, a homesteading. So homesteading is becoming quite popular again. And... Uh, yeah, we understand why. Right. You know? So if you're going to go out and do homesteading stuff, having a few skills like this, knowing how to do things, then might not be a bad idea. Okay. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's... I can hear it. That's down there. Mm -hmm. That's water seeping into the pump. We're down into the <clears throat> actual water source now. And at this point, I'm going to do... So how long does that glue need to be on it before we start pulling water up and that's a really Pu pushing question. water up in this case right? right it's a different system right that's actually an excellent question um <laughs> and according to according to the instructions on the back of the little dispensers here um when you twist them together it's a matter of seconds till they bond it's okay friction there and they bond and then they're in about 10 minutes, they set what they call set time. Right. At which point you can actually start operating things. Wow. But full strength, hardening to full strength is 24 hours. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and give this a little bit of time. And then uh, fire, fire it up. Okay. Yeah. What I'm looking at is I want, I don't necessarily want the weight of this well, this pump hanging on the glue joint, especially since they're wet. So I'm going to try and tie this off. Secure it a little bit. To the pipe here. Can I help with anything? I'm just figuring this out. I should have researched this one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, we're just going to do a simple clove hitch here for now. Let that set. I'm going to back it up. That, that way we've got the weight of the pump sitting on the rope instead of the glue joints so it doesn't try and pull the joints apart. Now, I think what we probably ought to do at this point is let this set for a little bit. Okay. And uh, how, long, how long should we let it set? Experts? <clears throat> experts? Experts. Say. Experts really <laughs> have trouble giving an exact answer. I found. Right? I just said, oh, uh, I had a friend. Set, no. Totally. Because it really depends. It really oh, just depends. And even mm -hmm. on here, it says, you know, depending on temperature and humidity. 15, so. 20 minutes to 24 hours. Yeah. But depending on say, depending on what chances you want to take. Honestly, um, now, whenever I've set sprinkler lines or anything, that, that kind of stuff using the same pipe and glue, put it together, stick it all together, walk over, turn the thing on, and it works just fine. Yeah. But, you know, since we're pressurizing this system, um, we're down there. Anything pops loose, I'd be really sad. Sad yeah. is a, maybe Sounds not the right word. But, um, <laughs> so we're going to let this set. Let's give it about 15 minutes, and then we'll fire up the, the generator and right. see if we can get anything. Yeah, so that I don't have there. to sit down after and like teach you some meditation. Right. <laughs> teach you how to ballot, manage your emotions. So the other we'll thing that I bit. didn't mention as, uh, as we were going along is... Uh, you probably noticed that we've got the electrical cord running down here. So the electrical cord, cord comes out of the pump. <coughs> Excuse me. They don't come with long cords on them. They come with a pre-wired pigtail, and right. then you add on to that. So what I've done in this case, since we're this is a 110 pump, we're just going to, until we get permanent power up here of some sort, we're running everything off of a generator. Right. So I just wired in a, uh, an extension cord of the proper gauge to handle the pump to the wires and then it's sticking out here. So what we'll do is just plumb it in, plug, plug it into the generator and, cool. and fire it up. So okay. right now we're using a generator. Um, I need to check into solar if solar can actually run this, you know? For sure. Solar is great, but it definitely has some limits. It does have limits. The, the biggest thing with solar has always been the, the cost and right. it's so much better than it used to be now, but it's still far from an inexpensive option. Uh, I don't know, we leave 
leave old Ted, uh, what's his name? Musk, leave, leave old Musk to keep doing it. Elon Musk? <laughs> Actually, we've come so far in our solar uh, technology, it's uh, far better when it, than, far better than it was when I was fascinated with it 20 years ago. Yes. Well, you know what? In very short order, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. I'll let you know exactly how much it costs to get solar. <laughs> I guess it's not coming out any further. I thought we had a little slack in there. We do have a little slack in there. It's being pinched. Not a problem. It's just being pinched in that tube. So I'm going to pull the slack out. Thanks for unpinching that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, we just have the pipe sticking out of the wall right now. We're just going to discharge water out to make sure everything's working. Uh, once we get our tank set up there, then we'll drop this down and go underground over to the tank. And then temporarily, we'll just put a spigot coming out of there to use water as needed. But uh, we're going to end up putting in, Rebecca's plans are to put in uh, a washing station and cooking station out here that will utilize the water. We'll plumb it into that when yeah. we get to that point. So, another beautiful day in paradise. Yes, it is a beautiful day in paradise. Okay, so we've been waiting about 25 minutes. Yeah, something like that. So right. anyway, I think we're okay with the glue now. I'm pretty confident of it. So we're going to fire up the generator and plug it in and see if anything comes out. It'll probably take a minute or two for it to build pressure. I don't know, but here's hoping, right? It's so exciting.